It appears that a federal deal will not be reached by midnight to avoid $85 billion in across-the-board spending cuts. So those cuts will begin to be phased in. Today, senators struck down two bills to deal with what they're calling the sequester. Republicans uh, backed a proposal which would have allowed the president to propose a package of alternative cuts. Democrats then offered a bill which would have replaced the request with a combination of higher tax rates and cuts to defense and farm programs. That means by uh, midnight, Republicans say that any delay would hurt the economy, or at least begin to do so. We hear from both sides. How much more money do we want to steal from the American people to fund more government? I'm for no more. We come to Washington to be legislators, to be representatives of our district, and to be legislators. And somehow that piece is missing in what the Republicans are doing here. They're just making noise. Assuming there is no deal in the next uh, five and a half hours Washington time, the $85 billion will be cut from schools, airports, the nation's military, among other things. They're pretty much across the board. Large parts of that budget are off limits, though. That includes so far programs for veterans, Social Security, and Medicare benefits. So just how big of an impact will the sequester really have? Well, the cuts amount to a relatively small percentage of projected spending. Fox 11's Chad Dorn has multiple views. President Obama says the sequestration cuts will damage the economy. Republicans blame the president for not being willing to compromise. But neither side is talking about the relatively small size of the pending cuts. Some Republicans have pointed out that the cuts are actually going to bring the budget down to something more like it was when George W. Bush was president, so it's not like they're cutting down into the bone. $85 billion is not trivial. In a $15 trillion economy, it's not huge, but it's not trivial either. The cuts amount to just over 2% of the $3.6 trillion the government is expected to spend by September. Governor Scott Walker, speaking on Fox News Sunday, says many states are still in the dark about what the cuts will be. All of us as governors have a real concern about what the impact is going to be on our respective states, both in terms of the potential of the cuts if they do nothing, but also in terms of what some of the alternatives might be. Joseph Pecky with the Citizens Advocacy Group, The Action, says the cuts will have dire consequences in Wisconsin. When you take it down to the local level, we're talking about $98 million right here in Wisconsin, and that affects everything from Head Start to public safety. Zepecki is using numbers from a study by the Center for American Progress, but Finkler says focusing on sequestration is short-sighted. The problem is mostly a long-term problem, not a short-term problem, not what we do over the next year or two. It's what we do over the next 20 or 30 years. Still, Schober says neither side wants to concede what could be considered a political victory. There'll, there'll be delays, there'll be probably furloughs or layoffs in the federal government, but a lot of it is political theater as well. And it seems likely the next act in this political game starts Friday. In Appleton, Chad Doran, Fox 11 News. Leaders from both parties are scheduled to meet with the president tomorrow. Now, you can take a look at how the budget sequester could impact Wisconsin. Just go to our website, fox11online.com, and click on the sequestration tab.